The word for today, boys and girls, is deception. You see, you may think it's real, and it feels real, but it's not. Get ready, you want to hear this one. I wish I had some really funny story that I could tell you that would make this video a lot more palatable. But the truth is, the story of Joe Lindner's death is still literally laying heavy on the chest of the fitness community. It's really hard for people to wrap their head around how a young man, 30 years old, could just pass away so easily. And how could we see so many guys in the last year die in the bodybuilding and fitness community and we just don't seem to have any answers? Now, as I put out in my video yesterday, I do believe why Joe Lindner died. I believe that I can see what was the straw that broke the camel's back. But let me just say this, Greg Doucette did a great video today about Joe, and if you haven't seen that, I wanna encourage you to go see it. Really a great job, Greg. I, I gotta tell you, uh, very empathetic, a great, great job. And so I would encourage you to see that. The only disagreement I have, uh, and if I heard this right, and Greg, you can um, feel free to correct me if I was wrong on this, the only disagreement I have uh, in what I heard, at least what I think I heard, was that this does matter if he died from this. And the reason it does matter is because millions of people all over the world have been deceived into taking that. And you have seen it on TV where newscasters have even gone out and fallen down and gone never to breathe another breath. You've seen it all over with even in other countries where you see soccer stars, guys in the top of their game fall down, have heart attacks, and they're gone, never to breathe another breath. And so deception is so deadly. And so I wanna read something to you out of the book of Matthew because I believe that the only truth is the truth in the word of God. And anything that doesn't match up to that is deception. So Matthew chapter number 24 and verse four is really awesome because the disciples came to Jesus and they said, hey, we wanna know what the end of the time looks like. In other words, when the world is about done, time is, will be no more, Jesus is coming back and he's going to set up his kingdom. What does that day going to look like? And Jesus says this, he says, verse four, and Jesus answered and said to them, see to it that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and they will mislead or deceive many people. Now, this is important because to deceive somebody is to make them think that you are telling them the truth. <clears throat> To deceive somebody is to make them think you are telling them the truth and you have their good in mind when it is just the opposite. And so what we have seen over the last several years, I believe, is deception. Jesus said the number one sign at the end of the age is deception. Now, you don't have to be a Christian to believe in the Bible to know that something is going on in our world in the last three years. You, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that. But I believe deception is so deadly and is all over the world that you cannot believe almost anything that you see. Now, this video may again get taken down because they're going to say that I am deceiving you, but I am giving you the truth of the word of God. And I want to give you four things today to look out for. These are things that the enemy, the devil is going to tell you to deceive you. This is so vital, so important. I am asking you to share this with five people today. I know, look, I fully believe that this channel is being throttled 
And I fully believe that we are not getting the message out there like we would hope. So I'm asking you to like, subscribe, comment, but I'm asking you to hit that share button and I'm asking you to put it in your text message and share it with five people in your text, in, in, your, in your contacts. It's that simple. Take you two seconds, okay? So I need you to do that today. If you believe in this channel, you believe in the message, I'm asking you to share it with five people. That's all I'm asking. So... Let's get back to deception. Jesus said the number one sign at the end of the age is deception. Again, watch this. In that video where it shows the local news people all saying like the exact same thing. Yeah, that's it. It's to serve our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso Las Cruces communities. Eastern Iowa communities. Mid-Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about trouble and trying to be responsible one side of news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of bias and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, <laughs> some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news, news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets this is scary yeah this is the scariest well that's propaganda everybody is saying the same thing and everybody is saying that if you listen to anything else you are being deceived they are fact checking things that we know to be true and they're saying they're not we're being gaslit i mean do you get that you and I know what truth is. We are actually speaking the truth, but they are coming out and saying that what you are saying is not true. They're gaslighting you. And so you sit there and you're like, man, what is going on here? What planet do I live on? And so I'm going to give you four things. And here they are. Number one thing about deception I need you to understand is... <clears throat> The number one thing I need you to understand about deception is, is your enemy, the devil, will make you think you are missing out. Now, hang on a second. Satan is the god of this world, little g, okay? He is the little g god of this world, the prince of the power of the air, the Bible says. He holds the title deed to this world. He usurped that authority that Adam and Eve were given by God when he caused them to sin. He usurped that authority, and he holds the title deed. Now, he has human actors that are out there in power that are carrying out his plans and programs. That is why you see the globalist and all of this other stuff going towards the end of the age. And if you do not study Bible prophecy, I challenge you to start studying it because you will see that everything is trending towards it, not away from the end of the day. Satan, the first thing he's going to do is try to make you think you're missing out. In the Garden of Eden, what did Satan do? He came to Eve and he said, look, why don't you eat of this tree? And she said, oh, no, 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 we're not allowed to. And he said, why? And she said, because if we do, we'll surely die. And what did Satan say? He said, you will not surely die. He said, God just knows that if you do, and the day you eat of it, you will be like he is. And so what did he do? He created this doubt and made her feel like she was missing out. Or in other words, God was withholding something good from her. In other words, God is unjust. God is not giving you what you deserve. God is putting restrictions on you. And so what happens when we feel like we're missing out, it keeps us in a state of being perpetually dissatisfied. You're always dissatisfied. You feel like you deserve more. And do we ever see that in our society now? People that think they deserve more and more and more. You see, that's part of the problem with the fitness community. That's part of the problem in bodybuilding. You always feel like you're missing out. If I, you know what? I don't get that drug that they're taking, or I don't have this, or I don't have that. If I only had this, I would get more. And so the Bible says the eye is not filled with seeing or the ear with hearing. In other words, you are never going to be satisfied with the way you look because you look at yourself through dissatisfied eyes, through a heart that has very myopic view, a heart that is, the Bible says, is deceitful and above all is desperately wicked. 
And so you and I will always be dissatisfied, especially in the bodybuilding community. When is enough enough? I was well over 300 pounds, but enough was never enough for me. You know, I look at, at Greg, he is actually right when he says that if you are a pro, you are in that 1% of the physically, genetically gifted. But it doesn't mean you're anybody better than anybody else. It only means that you have grown so dissatisfied with yourself that you're so driven that you keep going and you will pay the price to get to whatever you can get. But even when you get to that level, you're still never satisfied. But the other thing is, it will not only keep you perpetually dissatisfied, it will make you think that things are unfair. Look what happened in the garden. Satan came to Eve and he said, has God said? God is being unfair with you. If God was being fair, you could eat this. And so what happens when you feel like you're missing out? You feel like God is restricting you. God is putting things on you that are not fair, and it's just not right. I deserve more. Don't get that attitude. But then the other thing is, is it creates fear. When you feel like you're missing out, you're always fearful you're missing something. And you will hoard things to yourself. You will become selfish and dissatisfied. And so you will live in fear and God says that you and I, as Christians, we are not to live in fear, not to live with anxiety. God says, be anxious for nothing. And God meant that so much that he wrote that or its equivalent 365 times in the Bible. That means he said it one time for every day of the year. Don't be fearful. Don't be afraid. Don't be dissatisfied. In other words, do not live in fear. The second thing is, is when we are deceived, you will feel like not just that you are missing out, but you will also think that you can outrun consequences. The fitness and the bodybuilding community is the poster child for this principle. When you feel like you can outrun consequences, you are deceived. You see, what happens is, is guys get on these drugs, like me, like Greg, like a lot of guys, we get on these drugs and we feel like that we can outrun the consequences. Oh, I'll only take it for a little while and then I'll get off and I should be okay. But you don't know that. I don't know that. Look, I had told you, and I've been real open about my issues. I have an enlarged liver, I have kidney cysts, and I have a swollen prostate. Guys, you will not outrun the consequences of a bad life. You will not outrun the consequences of an alcoholic life. You will not outrun the consequences of any sort of sin that you allow in your life. You cannot outrun the consequences. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that's what he's going to reap. So you may sow a Diana ball here one day or two days or 10 days, but later on down the road, you're going to reap liver problems. You see, when you plant one seed, you don't just get one apple. You get an entire tree that produces many apples. And so the laws of sowing and reaping that God has put in place, God doesn't change. That means literally that the laws don't change in God's economy. God is not going to suspend his laws so that you can take drugs and get huge. He's not going to do it. He's not going to do it for me. You will not outlive the consequences of your choices. I say this all the time. The only thing you control are your choices. You do not control your consequences, whether that's good or bad, you cannot control that. If you sow good seed, you will reap good things. If you sow bad seed, you will reap bad things. It is God's laws and God's economy. God is not being mean to you. What God is doing is he has fences that are around so that if we go beyond those fences, we will get hurt. So God says, I put these fences in place for your good and for your protection. The other thing is, is when we feel like we can outrun consequences, we get this mentality that, oh, well, this doesn't apply to me. 
Oh, it's only going to hurt them. It's not going to hurt me like that. Genetically, we're not the same. Joe may have died from this, this, and this. And guys, let's be honest. Joe had many issues. He had a Ripley muscle disease. He had problems drinking caffeine, from what I understand, quite a bit of it. I'm sure he took a lot of stimulants to stay lean. It matters because the guy is gone. And there are no second chances once you're gone. It is appointed unto man once to die and after this, the judgment. In other words, the moment I step out of this life, I step before God. Now, you may not believe that, but that's okay. Because here's the issue. You may not believe in gravity, but if you go up to a 10-story building and you shake your fist in the face of gravity and you say, I don't believe you, I don't see you, and you jump you are going to find out real quickly that the law of gravity is real and you will die and that will be the end of it. So you can shake your fist in the face of God and say, God, I don't believe in you, but the Bible says that, that the proof of God is everywhere. It's all around you. And so it is wise for us in the face of a death like this for us to examine why did he die? Now, again, I do not believe that an autopsy is going to reveal that he died from this. I don't believe that because nobody wants to admit that. I believe deception is running wild in this world. And I believe it is a direct result of the end of the age. The other thing that happens when we feel like we can outrun consequences is we get to the point where we just don't care. And I've seen so many guys like that. They just get on stuff. And I was that way. I knew I was having issues and problems, but I was so entrenched and so in bondage to the way I was going that even knowing I was having issues, I couldn't get out of it. This was the only thing I knew. And so I was comfortable here. Even if it was killing me, this is what I knew. And comfortability will kill you. And so it's so important for you and I to know that our choices are what we can control, not our consequences. And so it's so important for you to understand that if you are making bad choices, God allows U-turns. You can get out of it. Now, just because you turn your life around does not mean it suspends the consequences that you have incurred. I still have a swollen liver, still trying to find out why. I still have cysts in my kidneys. I'm sure I know why all of this is happening. I still have a swollen prostate. Guys, you cannot do these type of things and expect to come out unscathed. Nobody gets off this planet alive. Nobody. And so it's so important that while you are here, that you live for God, you do not allow the enemy to destroy you. Remember, that's his job description, to steal, destroy, and kill. That's what he wants to do. And anybody that is looking at the way the world is going right now, that doesn't see stealing, killing, destroying, death, that doesn't see that, guys, you're willfully blind. The third thing Satan will do to you is he will get you off track. You see, he will get you to focus on good things, not best things. You see, the enemy of the best things are the good things. You know, you can be so sidetracked over here with good things that you're not doing the best things in life. The things that God wants you to do, you can get sidetracked and do good things. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a great job. You make $250,000 a year, but you love golf and there's nothing wrong with golf. But instead of going to work every day, you go out and you play golf. You've got no hope of ever being a pro, but you love to go play golf. And there's nothing wrong with playing golf. You're getting good at it. It's awesome. But you get fired one day from your job making $250,000 a year because you were so focused on golf that you were not completing the tasks that you had at work. And so you're focused on good things, not the best things. The enemy of the best is the good. 
So what happens when we get focused on the good? Well, it's kind of like this. We have the best things, God things. We have good things. Then we have alluring things. And then we have bad things. Now, when we are focused on the best things, Satan is always tempting us to try to get us to do the good things because he knows if he can get me to do good things, then I'm much more susceptible to do the alluring things. Why? Because when I'm doing the best things, the things that God wants me to do, when I'm reading his word, when I'm praying every day, when I'm going to church, when I'm fellowshipping with believers, when I am witnessing for Christ, I am not as easily distracted to do the bad things. It's a far jump from going from the great things of God to the alluringly bad things, but it's not as far a jump to go from the great things of God to the good things. Good example, had a pastor that literally contacted me not too long ago and said, thank you so much for your video. I had gotten involved with bodybuilding and fitness and was enjoying it so much, it was taking me down a bad road and he was even getting on steroids. You see, there's nothing wrong with this guy going to the gym and there's nothing wrong with working out, but he was a pastor. He had a God-sized project, a ministry that God had given him. And yet he was moving from the best things and he was doing good things. But in the good thing, now he was being tempted to do the alluring thing of steroids. Then from the steroids, it's not far to go to the bad things. You see, that's how Satan works. You see, it's not often that people jump straight from a marriage into bed with somebody they don't know. You see, what happens is Satan conditions you over time and he gets you talking to that person and confiding in that person and emotionally connected to that person and then you fall, right? That's usually what happens. That's normally how affairs happen. So it's not as easy for Satan to get you to go from here all the way to here. So he has to get you in the proverbial frog in the pot. I want you to write this down. The good is just below the best. But when we settle for the good and make it the best, the alluring which is under here is now in play. Whereas it wouldn't be in play up here, now when we're living and settling for good things, now the alluring things are in play. And the things you would never normally consider down here become much more palatable. Well, you say, Jeff, give me an example. Okay, here's an example. Let's say you're a guy that you believe in scripture and you shouldn't be watching porn. You, you guard your eyes from it. But you start watching movies and TV shows that have soft sex on it or have a lot of sensuality in it. And then what happens? You start to allow more and more and more to eventually it's an easier jump to porn. And so that's what the devil does. He gets you on the good and he gets you focused there so that the rest of it is within your reach. Now, let's go to the fourth thing. The fourth thing the enemy will do to deceive you is he will make you think there is no end game. There's no end game to this life. Look, whatever you do, live it up now. Eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow you die. Live your best life now. Party it up because tomorrow when you die, you sleep. Well, guess what? The Bible doesn't teach that at all. Now, you may be somebody out there who says, I don't believe in God. I don't believe the Bible. It's all fantasy. Well, guess what? If I'm wrong, when I die, I lose nothing. If you're wrong and you die and you will, you lose everything. You see, Satan wants you to think that there's no end game to this. There's no end game to the steroids. There's no end game to bodybuilding. There's no end game to any of it. You're never going to have to pay the price. You will. You will not only pay the price, but you will rue the day you did. You see, regrets are hard to swallow. When in actuality, had we made good choices, we would not be reaping the consequences we are. 
Now, once you're in this position like myself or Greg or some other guys that are in this position, you cannot live your life regretting it. What you do from here on out is you try to help people. You invest your life in people to try to help them to not make the same mistake. Guys, I get people all the time that that criticize me and make fun of me and mock me because uh, that I'm doing this and I'm doing this not for some sort of satisfaction thinking that I'm gaining points with God. I'm doing this because I want you to stay out of the lifestyle. I want you to get away from this. I want you to have an eternal view. You see, the eternal view is all there is. If this life ends and there is more, What is your life? It is but a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. People are very upset about Joe Lindner dying. And I get it. Why would God do this? Why would God take a guy so young? Well, let me just tell you, God did not do that. We are all byproducts of our decisions. That's exactly right. God gave him 30 years to find him. He gave him 30 years to try to know God and to accept his son as his savior. God was gracious and gave 30 years. God is giving you, according to the book of Acts, God has put you on this planet at this time in history, in your country, at your time, so that you can find him. That's what God put you here for. God put you here to impact your generation. That's what I'm trying to do. I got right with God in 2019, and I had run from God for 15 years after the death of my daughter and just got bitter and told God I was done. 2019, I couldn't go anymore, and I told God I was done. I just wanted to get my heart right And I repented and asked God to forgive me. And I asked God for 15 years. I ran from you for 15. God, please give me 15. I don't want to go out like this. Now, I don't know if God's going to give me 15 years, but I can tell you this. Every day I can, I'm going to live for him and warn people. I'm the watchman on the wall. My job is to tell the truth. Your job is what you do with it. The devil wants you to think there's no end game. Or he wants to distract you so much, especially in the bodybuilding world. Guys, you become your own God. You are so focused on what you see and constantly trying to get more, constantly trying to make yourself better. You're never going to be enough. It's never going to satisfy. The eye is not filled with seeing. The ear is never filled with hearing. You're never going to be satisfied. The eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you die, is a fatalist view of life. You see, that's living for the moment, and it creates a false sense of security. You see, what the devil wants you to do is don't prepare. Do not seek out why God put you here. Do not seek out God at all. But God said, you are without excuse. I am without excuse. Why? He said, because even in all of nature, he has made it plain that he is here. But look at what the world is doing. They are suppressing the knowledge of God. That means the idea is to take a beach ball or some sort of ball filled with air and try to hold it underwater as long as you can. And what happens? Eventually, you will get tired and you will let go and it will come up. That is exactly what God said trying to deny him is, trying to deny that God exists, trying to deny that Jesus came and he died on a cross and he rose again the third day for your sins, trying to deny that God said is futile. Again, scripture says it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. I don't want to leave it here because I want you to know that Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. You see, Joe Lindner's life ended, but his eternity started on that fateful day not too long ago. You still have time. While it is fresh in your mind, investigate Jesus. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me.